Are you planning on buying your first home in Richmond or maybe in Vancouver? Congratulations. In this podcast, let's look at how we can apply the various government grants and programs to your first home purchase. Welcome to the Condo Cafe. We brew steaming topics and fresh insights into condo living, condo purchasing and selling, and everything in between. Who says real estate is boring and complicated? Join us every Friday as we navigate the Richmond, BC world of condos. I found this Richmond listing a couple of days ago. It's a nine-year-old, 623 square foot, one bedroom, one bath condo going for $488,000. Let's create a little case study. Allow me to introduce you to Olivia and Noah. They are first time home buyers interested in this property. Both are employed with a combined annual income of $150,000. What would the financing of this purchase look like if we were to incorporate the various government incentives? I developed a little spreadsheet to help explain how all the programs fit together and in what amounts. There are potentially four government programs that could help. Number one, saving towards the down payment. Number two, assisting with the down payment. Number three, property transfer tax exemptions. And number four, income tax credits. Let's take a closer look. Olivia and Noah have a combined annual income of 150k. They found a nine-year-old condo in Richmond for for The first group of government programs help Olivia and Noah save for their down payment, RRSPs. They may use up to $35,000 from their registered retirement savings account towards their down payment. Money paid into RRSPs are of course uh, non-taxable, but whatever they use needs to be paid, paid back in 15 years. FHSAs. Olivia and Noah may also use their contributions to their first home savings account. This is a registered savings account that came into effect on the 1st of April 2023 and was specifically created to help first-time home buyers save towards their first home. Individuals may deposit up to 8000 into this account each year and withdraw a lifetime maximum of 40000 Note, there are some special requirements regarding deposits to these accounts. In Olivia and Noah's case, since this is a new program, they may only have 8000 to put towards their down payment. TFSAs. They may also have 10000 in their tax-free savings account. TFSAs are general savings account where money deposited into the account have already been taxed, but interests earned are tax-free. So let's say they have $53,000 in total savings to use as a down payment. Secondly, the Canadian Mortgage and Housing Corporation, CMHC, has a program where approved applicants may borrow up to 5% of four times their annual income to buy their first home. If it's a new home, they may borrow 10%. In Olivia and Noah's case, their annual income is 150 k 4.5 times equals $675,000. Since this is a 9-year-old home, they can borrow 5% of that amount, which is 33750 They can pay back this loan at any time without penalty or when they sell at fair market price. If the fair market price has increased or decreased, Olivia and Noah may pay back the loan together with the percentage increase or decrease up to 8% either way. For example, if they decide to pay back the loan and the fair market price of their home has increased to 10%, they pay back 33750 plus 8%, which equals to 36450 In short, Olivia and Noah may borrow up to 33750 from CMHC to add towards their down payments and in this way reduce their mortgage. Thirdly, first-time home buyers are exempt from paying property transfer tax. If the price of the home is below 500000 k and 750 if it is a new build. Since Olivia and Noah's home is below 500 k we have a property transfer tax exemption of approximately 7760 This is like 7760 savings. And finally, they can also file for an income tax credit by entering $10,000 online 31270. Currently, this credit is about $1,500, which pays for some of the closing costs. Closing costs? Sure, we come into that. So let's summarize and look at what Olivia and Noah's monthly payments may look like. The price of the home was 
488k, the savings are 53k, and the CMHC loan is 33750 with a total down payment of $86,750. Since the down payment is less than 20%, but more than the required 5% minimum, they are required to take out a mortgage default insurance. The mortgage Olivia and Noah will need, including the above-mentioned insurance, will be about 412 485. The closing costs are typically between 1 and 4% of the total cost. It pays for the lawyer's fees, moving costs, home inspections, appraisals, and so on. This brings us to their monthly total payments. Olivia and Noah's total monthly payments will be approximately $3,037, made up of a mortgage payment of about $2,408, and according to the property sheet, a property tax of $168.50 and strata fees of $458. Homeowners' insurance, electricity, cable, etc. have not been included, so they need to be accounted for. These calculations are approximate but realistic. I use the paid version of the Canadian Mortgage app. If you want to try it out, this QR code is a link to the download. Next week, we'll look at the juicy topic of strata bylaws. Hopefully, you find value in this information. Thank you for joining me. Please join me again next week. Bye for now.